I, I think we enjoyed playing. Uh, I think aside from what most people think about the differences in, in, the, in the guys and the personalities in the band, they genuine, genuinely are friends. Um, I think sometimes it's hard to show that, but I think that's really an underlying thing that nobody has, has really tumbled to yet, you know. But I really think we are friends. We have our own ways of going about dealing with that friendship, you know, which may not be ordinary to most people, but there is a friendship there, and I think that bond was always there. I would have said, let sleeping dogs lie uh, if I thought that this reunion were going to be lame. But it was anything but lame. It was good. If anything, we were a better band the summer of 83 than we were summer of 69, summer of 70. If anything, we were a much, much better band. And, some, and in most instances, that's not the case. And I just, I think, whatever you want to call it, the force, God, Buddha, uh, I think whatever force is th that's out there that, that, that allowed us to, to do this, you know, uh, that even allows me to be sitting here talking about it. I mean, because it's been, it's been far more than special to me. It's been uh, closer to magical for me. I had no idea it was the emotional highs that we would uh, incur as a, as a unit again. I had no idea that that was in store for me. Um, there is a certain, I've, I've talked about the dream and living the dream. There is a certain inherent fast lane thing that comes with living that dream. Everybody wants you. Decisions have to be made against other things you normally would have done. Like, let's go and play for that guy. He was a great guy and he gave us a break. Or should we go to London and play for X thousands of dollars? Or should we play this club because we owe this guy a favor? Or should we go and play the Seattle or Woodstock Pop Festival? Um, it's just another plateau of decisions. Uh, it's more money. It's more agents and managers hitting on you. Another record label saying, when is your contract here done? We want to sign you when it's done. And uh, there's a whole lot of pressures. And ours were magnified because from these eyes, our follow-up record, Laughing, they, after that had sold about 800,000 copies, some DJ down south flipped it over and played Undone. And that song sold like, and then a million, 1.6 million copies, which in those days, the late 60s, was a lot of records. Uh, right after that, No Time in American Woman, in a space of, I think, two or two and a half years, we had four or five songs that were classed as million sellers that made the charts. The pressures became astronomical. We really couldn't cope with the pressures. I used to have, I used to have a little contest with myself every day. I would, uh, I would finally get up in the air in the plane and the contest was to figure out where I was going and where I had just been without looking at my itinerary because I didn't know. I was that fried, just didn't know. And now that, and now that I'm uh, breathing sober air, I, I really am, I'm really lucky that it happened when I was that young and able to, and able to like sustain a lot of abuse because like I've just, I've been doing a lot of work in the last couple of years, a lot of work. And I think back and I think, I don't, I don't know how I survived that because I know how I feel now with this maintaining a, a horrendous schedule. I don't know how I dealt with that at all. I don't know how I got through it. It was, it was astounding. When I left the Guess Who, it was the drug era. It was the late 60s, the psychedelic era. Uh, and myself being allergic to smoke, I never got into any drugs. Uh, I've never done a drug in my life. I find it hard to take an aspirin. Um, the rest of the band, like anybody else around, was trying things out. So there was a real rift between us. When I left the band, many people said it in... Uh, I don't know if it was said in the band, but uh, reviewers and people doing articles on the band said I could never make it in this business being straight. And I was determined to go out there and make it. And I was lucky enough to get Fred Turner, who was a real straight guy, and my brothers, and started uh, back when Turner Overdrive. And in about 74, 75, we hit number one, album and single. I had made it, being straight. There is a lot of 
autobiographical material in in my own my own songs because I was hurt tremendously uh, by one woman in particular. You carry those scars for a long time, but an accountant doesn't have the release that an artist has. If uh, if an accountant's wife leaves him after ten years of what he thinks to be a good marriage, what what's he going to do? Go to work the next day and do the books better? You know he can't pour that that misappropriated emotion into doing someone else's ledgers any better. Whereas an artist has the luxury of pouring some of that emotion and, and getting some of that, that weight off his shoulders uh, by sharing that hurt with other people who've had similar experiences. It's, it's, almost been, it's almost been as though we were able to cheat time. Uh, we've, been, we've been giving uh, good parts in a Rod Serling episode in a time machine Twilight Zone H.G. Wells kind of thing where you can it's almost as though five minutes has only lapsed um, it's 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 amazing we, we uh, the first day of rehearsal we must have learned almost 30 songs the very first day of rehearsal I had no idea we would take a short break and we would start telling jokes from 1966 and 67 we would start calling each other by the old nicknames what it has meant to me is that i have three great friends that would go to the end of the world for me if if they knew i needed them if if they knew i was hurting they would come and hug me and help me stop crying um it has it has taught me one of the truest meanings of friendship professional friendship uh, it's easy enough to always stay close to a guy that you grew up next door to. Well, even that's not so easy sometimes, but, but if, you can, if you can magnify that five million percent to have friends that are friends with a capital F and still be professional playing partners, that's, God, that's worth, there's no amount of money in the world that could buy that. It has taught me that I have three friends that I will never lose and it has explained to me part of the magic uh, that happened at the beginning it is that there is some chemistry there. It's almost, and I, I don't mean it to sound um, religious or uh, fatalistic or, or whatever, but it's almost as though we had no choice. I don't mean the reunion per se. I just mean it's, it's almost as though the parts were written before we were born. It says to me that we did something that was valid, something that mattered not only to us but to a lot of people. It, uh, it says to me that uh, my own interpretations of situations, usually, usually music or revolving around music, uh, both individually and as a group, were accurate. That what we did was a fact, was uh, was uh, was valid. It, it had worth. It, it, uh, we, we were on the money. We weren't kidding ourselves. <laughs> I don't know. It's almost like the old days. It's almost everything has happened so fast that I don't think I'm going to get a chance to reflect upon it until it's finished at, at a point, you know, until um, the, the concerts and the video and whatever we're doing is all finished because it's almost like the old days. We just kind of slipped back into the way we operate and off we went on the old train again, you know. It's, it's been great. The reaction and, and the emotional uh, surge has been tremendous. Um, there have been all kinds of emotions, all kinds of stimulation, you know, and it's, it's really great. The audiences have been fabulous better than I would have hoped. I, I thought they would be good, but I didn't think they would have the emotion that I've seen. I mean, it's been incredible. Um, I, it, it, for me, it was an opportunity that I could not pass up. Uh, I spent, I gave so much of my life to the, to the Guess Who as I was growing up. Uh, when I left in 1970, I missed a lot of the rewards uh, as far as acclimation and, and financial. To be able to go back now and uh, 
do it all again before I'm 40, which is not too far away. And also Jim Cale, the same thing. We're both pushing 40. Uh, to be able to go back and cheat time, we call this our Rod Serling trip, our Twilight Zone tour of Canada. We're cheating time. We're, we're slicing 10 years out of our lives. And, and going back, I feel like I'm 25 again when I'm on stage. Um, I, it's something that not many people can do. A lot of athletes would like to do that, be pushing 40 and go back and play a football game with the rest of the guys who are in their 20s and go out there and really kick butt and really, you know, really do it. We're really doing it, and it feels great. And we're out on stage, boy, I look around, and I see Jim and Gary and Burden, and it's very hard not to laugh out loud, to just, with happiness, just blurt out and laugh and say, this is phenomenal, the feelings there, being there, and having the people react to every song we play. Uh, even some of the new songs now sound like the old Guess Who songs. We've been able to take new songs written last month or last year and put our feelings and our identity into it, and it still sounds like... Uh, Sounds like the guess who.